Hi everyone, welcome to day three of the 12 Days of BIPOC Christmas Stories project that Anika and I are currently doing. Uh, yesterday it was Anika's turn and she read Too Many Tamales, so if you guys haven't already, check that out. Right now I'll be reading Christmas in Lagos, so stay tuned for that. Thank you! Christmas in Lagos by Sharon Abinbola Salu Lynn from the Sahara Desert and into Ranti's room. This was Hamartin which meant one thing, Christmas was on its way. As she got ready for school, Ranti's younger brother, Dibo, rushed into her room. Ten days till Christmas, he yelled. Ranti was excited too. Christmas meant new clothes and new shoes. It was the last day of school. Miss Annie, the class teacher, asked the students to share what they planned to do over the Christmas holidays. Some of Ranti's cl classmates were going abroad with their families and called out all the faraway places they would visit. New York, said Kamsi. London, said Ladipo. Paris, said Hawa. Ranti said nothing. What about you, Ranti? Miss Annie asked. Ranti did not want to speak up. She imagined her classmates going ice skating, building frosty snowmen, eating tasty chocolates and taking fancy pictures. Kamsi would visit Times Square. Ladipo would visit Buckingham Palace. Hawa would, vis would see the Eiffel Tower. What about Ranti? There was no snow in Lagos, no tower to see, nothing exciting to do. This will be the most boring Christmas ever, she told Miss Ani. No, Christmas in Lagos is very special. Open your eyes and look closer. But how? Runty asked. Write down everything that happens over the Christmas holidays, said Miss Annie. So Runty got a jour journal and started writing. On December 16th, she wrote, Mummy took me to Balagon Market today. It was very hot. People were everywhere, walking very fast. I didn't like the noise from cars or people shouting. But I liked the Christmas songs playing on the radio. Mummy bought me and Debo, Debo new clothes and shoes. We can't wear them till Christmas. I can't wait. On December 17th, she wrote, we passed by the airport today. Daddy said the airplanes are full of people coming to Lagos for Christmas. Grad Grandma and Grandpa came from Abiyokuta this afternoon. I was so happy, I ran and hugged them. They will be spending Christmas with us. Grandma said I looked taller. I told her I've been eating lots of beans. After dinner, Grandpa told us the story of how the lion became king of the jungle. I love his stories. On December 18th, she wrote, We went to the amusement park today. Guess what? I saw Father Christmas. He gave me a toy puppy. Debo got a toy train. I want a real puppy, but Mummy said not yet. After lunch, we visited an orphanage and gave food and clothes to the children. I gave a small girl my toy puppy because she was crying. Debo put his train in his pocket. On December 19th, she wrote, Auntie Lola got married today. She looks so beautiful. We ate lots of food and danced. On the way home, I saw bright billboards and Christmas lights. I wish I could see them every day. On December 20th, she wrote, Our neighbor, Mrs. Joseph, has a dog called Daisy. Today, Daisy gave birth to eight puppies. Mrs. Joseph let me carry one of them. It licked my face. Mommy says I take good care of Debo. I'm sure I could take care of a puppy, too. On December 22nd, she wrote, Today we went to church for a Christmas concert. The choir sang special Christmas songs in different languages. Then, we lit candles and sang carols. Finally, they lit a huge Christmas tree. I loved it. Finally, Christmas Day came. The sounds of banger and fireworks filled the air. Everyone was excited. Christmas was here at last. Ranti, ro Ranti wore her new dress and shoes. Then she twirled and twirled and twirled until she felt dizzy. 
She loved her new outfit. It made her feel special. The whole family went to church that morning. We celebrate the birth of Jesus today, said the pastor. God gave us Jesus, his best gift to mankind because he loves us. Spread love and joy this season. Ranti wrapped her arms around her family and whispered, I love you. We love you too, they chorused. After church, they went home and celebrated Christmas with plates piled high with jollof rice, fried plantains, chicken, suya, and other goodies. Throughout the day, people came to visit. Everyone had something to eat and drink. They wished each other Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. Just before sunset, Mrs. Joseph arrived. In her arms, she carried a little puppy. This is for you, Ranty, she said. A real puppy? Thank you, Ma, Ranty squealed. To the, pu to the puppy, she whispered, I think I'll call you Tickles. He yelped. Before going to bed, Ranty wrote in her diary, December 25th, today was the best Christmas ever. I wore my new dress and shoes and ate lots of food. Guess what? I have a puppy, a real one, not a toy. He's so cute and cuddly. But what I really enjoyed was spending time with my family. On the first day back at school, Ranty read her Christmas journal to the, to the class. Everyone clapped. Thank you, Miss Annie. I had the best Christmas ever, said Ranty. Miss Annie smiled. I knew you would. And that's the end of Christmas in Lagos. I hope you guys enjoyed our read, our read out loud. I hope that you guys go actually go out and buy the story for any kids that you know who like to read. Um, like I said, we want to increase awareness about all the different types of BIPOC Christmas stories out there. So if you guys haven't already, please support these wonderful authors, these wonderful stories out there. And uh, tomorrow will be Anika's turn and she will be she will be reading another Christmas story for BIPOC children. I hope you guys stick around for that. And yeah, thank you for your support.